Hi. So today we will do a derivation and understand how charge accumulates on a capacitor. So first of all, let me draw a circuit which has a capacitor and a resistance to the battery. So here is a battery or a cell. This is our capacitor. It's the symbol for capacitor. And let's say we have a resistance. And you can add, you can add other elements. You can add a switch. You can add a key. Whatever you want. Now this battery has an EMF. E. Let us call this E. The capacitance of this capacitor is C. And the resistance of this resistor is R. That's how an RC circuit looks like. R stands for resistance, C stands for capacitance. So maybe, let me write this down. This is an RC circuit. Okay. And now let us say a current will flow through the circuit. So let us say, okay, that I current is flowing through the circuit. I was there, I was there. Fine. Now we need to find how much charge is getting accumulated on the capacitor as a function of time. So as time passes, the charge on the capacitor will continuously increase. So it will keep on increasing and how will, we need to understand how does it increase. Now, what I want you to understand is it will not increase in discrete amounts. It will increase continuously. So we won't add up. We will integrate. Fine. So let us use. Now we need to relate all these things. We need to relate R, C, I, E, all these variables. How do we do this? Well, we use a law. We use Kirchhoff's loop law. Okay, and what does Kirchhoff loop, loop law tells us that okay, there's a fall in potential, so we write potential here is Q by C, right? The capacitance, capacitance is charge by voltage by EMF in this case, which gives our voltage as Q by C. Fine, if there's a decrease, we write Q by C. Fine. And now the current, same current is going through the uh, resistor. It faces a potential drop. So we say, okay, that's IR or RI, whatever you want. Now, as this current flows, it goes there, no change in potential difference. Now it increases. So we write minus E. Increase, we write minus, and this becomes zero. Okay. Uh, we can rearrange this. We can say that, okay, we, we can take E there, and we can say that E is IR plus Q by C. And I R comes Q by C uh, goes there. We can say that E minus Q by C is R. What is current? We need to somehow relate current to the charge. Of and that's easy. We know current is dQ by dt, right? How does charge change with respect to time? And it's changing continuously. So we write dq by dt, that's i, we can write r dq by dt, right? Now we can simplify, we can say like this easily, r dq by dt. Now we can cross multiply the sides and we find okay that dq upon 
EC, your EC minus Q gives DT by RC, the resistance times the capacitance. And that's what it means. Now, we need to know how does charge accumulate from time t equal to zero from the big moment we establish a circuit till some time t. So we can integrate, we can integrate with limits. Okay, so we write zero at the charge in the capacitor at initially to some amount q, amount q dq by ec minus q it remains the same and we can integrate this with limits 0 to some value in time let us say t t by rc now we need to perform this integral so you can use our uh, properties of natural log or we can use substitution method now we can say that ec let us take ec minus q as u the u function then you can say okay d u by dq is nothing but minus one right this because this is a constant okay this is a constant so the derivative this deri its derivative becomes zero and the derivative of minus q is q so dq du by dq is minus one and we can write du dq is minus du we can write du with this thing as u yeah, it is done. Um, okay. So, minus du by u integral sign. And this becomes t by rc. So, integral of dt becomes t. Right? t, uh, t to the power 0 plus 1 upon 0 plus 1. And this becomes rc. So, t by rc. This becomes minus ln, the base of natural log. So log of base E is known as ln of u. What will be the limits? When q becomes 0, from this, when q becomes 0, this will become Ec. And when q becomes q, it will become Ec minus q. Okay, we have this, have these things to understand all of them so we can say using our properties of uh, log that it is nothing but ln ln ec minus q by ec because we can expand this log logarithm and then using the properties of log we can say log a minus log b is nothing but log a by b this becomes t by rc now this is in its logarithmic form we can convert it into exponential form how do we do this we raise first we transport the minus sign then we raise the entire thing to the power e how will this look ec minus q upon ec okay will become e to the power t by rc fine this becomes this is easy to solve now this is 1 minus q by EC e to the power minus T by RC and 1 becomes there and EC goes there you get Q as EC 1 minus E to the power T by RC that's our function of Q. that's our charge on the capacitor as a function of time. Let me add this down there. Q is equal to Ec 1 minus e to the power minus T by Rc. Okay. And this is the maximum, no, note this is, this is the maximum charge on the capacitor. We know that like capacitance is the charge by voltage. Okay. So the charge becomes Capacitance into voltage EC. So that's the maximum charge. You can write this as Q0 if you want to. Q is equal to Q0 maximum charge. 1 minus E to the power minus T. And the same thing. 
divided by now what is RC? Now I want you to check this dimensional using dimensional analysis. So this should this thing should be Q. This should have the units of charge. This clearly has the units of charge, so this should be dimensionless. And for this to be dimensionless, this thing should have the dimensions of time. You can check this so that if you the dimensions of the resistance they are m l square i the current the power minus 2 t to the power minus 3 and that's our dimensions of r and dimensions of c are okay, c is i square times t to the fourth power length to the minus second power okay and into the power minus one fine therefore rc will have c l to the power minus two multiply two into l to the power minus two it will become one similarly if you solve the entire thing which is very easy by the way so i these these terms cancel out these terms cancel out these two cancel out so we are left with the dimensions of t so as a quick check this was it had the dimensions of time okay now we can write this as tau rc as tau this is known as time constant of an rc circuit this is constant you have a resistance you have a capacitance you multiply these together you get a time constant represented by the letter tau this is another form of our equation Q is equal to Q naught 1 minus e to the power minus t by tau. Now, an important thing helps us when we need to know the charge developed on the capacitor in one time constant. So, time after one time constant, one tau. That's That really helps in many problems. So, we just substitute uh, t as tau this T as tau, we can, that's easy to solve. It becomes Q naught, okay? 1 minus E to the power minus tau by tau. And of course, these will cancel out. So we get Q is equal to EC, let me write this down as EC, 1 minus E to the power minus 1. So we can write this 1 by E. What is the value of E? E is equal to 2.718 something something. So evaluate this, we get Q as 0 0.63 times EC. That's what we get. This is how much charge has accumulated on the capacitor in one time constant. Now EC is the maximum charge that, that, that gets accumulated on the capacitor. That's EC. And from this we can say that 63% oops, 63% of the charge is established on the capacitor in one time constant in an RC circuit. This really really helps while solving many problems. Now, if we graph this because graphs are really beautiful. If we graph this, how will this look? Graph this thing. Now to show you, this is how the graph looks. We draw the y-axis, this is the x-axis. On the y-axis, we have this, this thing. 63%. Okay. Y-axis represents the charge on the capacitor and the x-axis represents time. Now, we divide time into time constants. So, this is 0 of course. This is 1 time constant after two time constants, three time constants, and so on. You can say that, okay, it's four time constants, something. Now, if we graph this, it looks something like this. Now, watch. This is the maximum charge on the capacitor, EC. Okay. It goes, it goes up, and becomes something like this. 
okay and the charge corresponding to this value is it's like we calculated 0.63 ec and this corresponds to you substitute tau t tau instead of t we get 0.63 now what does this graph tells tell us so if we extend this line so in theory these two lines these two lines will meet at infinity all right so after in, in theory again it will take infinite time for this capacitor for this uh, battery to completely charge this capacitor to develop a charge ec on the capacitor it will take infinite time but in practice when you uh, perform practicals it takes a very very small amount of time to develop around 99% of the charge on this capacitor because okay, so that's how the graph looks and i hope you understood these things quite clearly so let us do a quick numerical okay let me write r c equal to t here now let me give you give you some numbers what i wanted to find is how many time constants will elapse to developed 99% sorry 99% of charge in an rc circuit this circuit okay 99% of charge the capacitance is given as c is 100 microfarad okay the emf of a battery is 12 volts and the resistance is 2 ohm okay q is equal to 99% of maximum the total charge that is developed these are the numbers which i give you and you need to calculate how much time how much time it will take to develop 99% of the charge all, all right and using this you can find out yourself how many time constants will elapse till it develops 99% of charge and this problem is from A lovely book, Concepts of Physics. You must have heard of this. A very nice book. So, thanks for watching this video, and I hope it helps you a lot.